Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming out today, for joining us for this uh, truly momentous occasion. I'm Father Larry Christian. I serve as the department chair for the development uh, efforts of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. I'm also the pastor of St. Anne's Parish. This is a tremendous time in the life of our Archdiocese. We are blessed to live in a city which was founded more than 300 years ago. And this area, this our Archdiocese, is still as vibrant, as diverse, as compassionate, and welcoming, and rooted in faith as it ever was. On the Way Andale campaign, in many ways, is about continuing that journey, our pilgrimage together. The pilgrimage started by our founders and the many people who helped establish our Catholic missions and parishes, schools, hospitals, colleges, service programs, and all the things that reflect the spirit of faith in our archdiocese. We began the On the Way Andale campaign in the spring of 2017. We launched our public phase in October of 2017 with $18 million. Since then, we have continued to share the mission and invite support through our parishes and our gatherings. And today we have just over $49 million. Isn't that a great accomplishment? It is. But our goal is still 60 million. So we're in that part where we want to put it over the top. We're going to put it over the top. Because of the generous pledges of many good people, today we are excited to announce our next major project, which is the establishment of the El Camino de San Antonio Missions and Pilgrimage Center, right here at the site of the former St. John Seminary. This is the third major project that we will be constructing from the On the Way Andale campaign. We broke ground for the new Vietnamese Martyrs Parish in August of 2017. <clears throat> and we are blessed, uh, we did bless the ground at the new Mary Mother of the Church Parish on Petrenko Road this past December. I'd like now to invite Father David Garcia, one of our campaign honorary chairs and someone very, very familiar with our missions to give us some history of the missions here in San Antonio. Father David. Thank you very much and welcome to Mission Concepcion. This is the parish that um, I am uh, working with right now and it's been a privilege to be here. I've been doing, uh, being director of the Old Spanish Missions for almost 12 years. I, um, uh, I uh, followed uh, Monsignor Baltianicek who was here for 40 years. And uh, it was, he's like our patron saint, and uh, we have his picture in the back of the church because he is looking over us, and he's the one that helped us, has helped us do all the things we've done, including um, each one of the missions had a major um, renovation, restoration, but um, they never end. They never end. Uh, the missions were founded, um, in starting with the Alamo, of course, that's not ours anymore, but by the way, they didn't pay us the full price when they bought it from us. Um, I'm a asking the Archbishop if he would ask uh, the governor for the uh, final payment plus interest. That would finish out the campaign. Ter Terminamos. <laughs> and, uh, and then 1720 was San Jose, and then 1731 was the other three. Uh, this one, Concepcion, San Juan Capistrano, and Espada. But one of the things that I, I just want, you know, I could talk forever about the missions. This one here that you're at is the only one that is completely intact from the colonial period. All the other ones, because of the ground that they were on, the shifting ground, uh, caliche soil, which, you know, you get a lot of rain, and it expands and you get a lot of and you get a lot of drought which San Antonio gets all the time and contracts and so you know the the movement of the of the walls uh, and so uh, San Jose San Juan and Espada all at some point collapsed and they were rebuilt thanks be to God by uh, not only Catholics but also all of the community of San Antonio and many many others helping out this one is built on rock because the quarry is right over there by the parking lot 
And so there's a, it just, it's interesting that it's just a small area here that is all under this ground that is all rock. And so Concepcion has the original towers, the original dome, and all of the original things, and I was not here when it was built. <laughs> One of the things that I think is important about connecting the missions and the history of the missions to what we're gonna do here is that from the very beginning, pilgrimage was an intimate part of the missions. Um, the Franciscans who founded the missions walked from central Mexico, Querétaro and Zacatecas, and they came, and so theirs was the first pilgrimage to get here. But of course, the Native Americans had been doing pilgrimages around here for centuries before that. And so one of the things that the Franciscans did to try to attract the uh, Native Americans was they painted the front of Concepcion and the front of San Jose with a brilliant colored geometric pattern that, um, that was uh, kind of um, a little bit like the mosques in Morocco and Northern Africa that had such an influence on Spain because the Moors were in Spain for 700 years. And so if you've ever had the chance to be here when we illuminate the, the front of Concepcion or the front of San Jose, and we'll, we do it every year, it's an absolutely spectacular thing. That's what the Native Americans would have seen from miles away. And so as they looked at that, they would say, what is that? You can imagine, because there's nothing here, and then this fantastic illuminated facade of this church, which they've never seen buildings, of course, before, so they would come in a pilgrimage to see what it was about. And I think that's what we're gonna try to do here. See what it's about, come, visit, walk, um, you know, be imbued with the kind of faith that has been the kind of faith that not only built these, but sustained these. One of the reasons why the Santonio missions are a World Heritage Site is not just because they're beautiful buildings, they are, not because they're old, they are, but because they are living. They have been alive for 300 years and they're doing the same things today that they did 300 years ago. And that's what the United Nations said was called universal human value. That the fact is that humans have come, they built them for a purpose and they kept doing the same thing for 300 years, and we're gonna to continue to do that with this site now in terms of the pilgrimage center. So I think it's a wonderful uh, tribute to the Franciscans, to the Native Americans that built the, the, uh, the missions, and to all of the congregations for 300 years that have faithfully come here to worship, to gather with the elderly, to gather with their children, to do the sacraments, uh, to be a community, to support each other, to be the church, and to be the, the, the city of San Antonio. So I think what we're doing here today is a continuation of these 300 years, and I wanna congratulate Archbishop, um, and, and, and I, the, 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 this campaign is almost over with, so let's forget Andal and let's just say terminamos, okay? So that we can say, we're gonna get this thing done, and we're gonna get it done right away. Thank you very much, and welcome to Concepcion. afternoon. We are so happy to begin this journey of offering pilgrimages and days of reflections to highlight our beautiful missions. My name is Joan Martinez and I am the director uh, in the Department for Pastoral Ministries and I'm pleased to introduce you to our new director uh, within our department and for the Archdiocese, the Honorable Rebecca Simmons. She is a former Bear County judge and fourth Court of Appeals Justice. She is well known in the community, having served as president of the local Bar Association, director of the State Bar Association, and chair of the Texas Bar Foundation. She currently advises the Texas Supreme Court on technology as chair of the State Com Committee on Information Technology, she brings leadership, business acumen, and technology skills to El Camino. But it is her deep faith, <coughs> expressed in her commitment to her community, that is her biggest asset and our blessing. Rebecca is a recipient of the Archdiocesan Lumen Gentium Award and a tireless worker at Our Lady of Grace Parish, having served as a catechist and pilgrimage leader for over 20 years. She began bicycle pilgrimages to the missions with her religious education classes and eventually began an annual parish pilgrimage with more than 100 pilgrims participating. 
She was instrumental in developing the Mission Im Mission Possible Espada program at Our Lady of Grace to completely refurbish the youth building for Mission Espada while creating a community relationship between the parishes. Her commitment to evangelization through the missions is evident, and we are pleased to welcome her. Rebecca. Thank you so much. I am thrilled and I am humbled to be here today as the new director. If the downtown cathedral is the heart of San Antonio, then the missions are its soul, interwoven in the very fabric of this city from its inception 300 years ago. The missions, as so ably pointed out by Father David, are our icons, our shrines of our community, right? From the time the Franciscans traveled their hundreds of miles to the time when the Indians uh, the Native Americans lived here, worshipped here, and to the chapels where people worship today. Uh, San Antonio has been very involved. But it is time, right? The missions are ready. They have been refurbished. They are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we are ready. We are ready today in particular because we live in a time of distraction. Screen time is more important than real time, right? Our relationships fail. We feel upset. Quite like the chapel over there that will soon be the pilgrimage center, we're in disrepair. We feel ignored. We feel troubled. We feel angry. We feel stressed out. We are looking for something more. And the missions, they're ready. It is time. It is time to develop a program where people come not as tourists, although tourists are great and our community loves them. It's time to come as a pilgrim, as a seeker, on a journey, a journey with Christ, a journey to find God, to find yourself, a transformational journey and like that pilgrimage center, which will be transformed, it will be transformed. We too can be transformed when we view with pilgrim's eyes the faith, the living faith that these missions have to offer. Now, many of us are familiar with the Mission Santiago de Capistola, and that's in Spain. It's about 500 plus miles and we're in the United States, and we really don't have the time for six weeks off to walk that distance. We don't have the energy often, and uh, I, don't think, I don't think I'm ready to walk that far either. And in case you haven't noticed, we've got a 10 mile stretch. We can do this, right? We can do this, and not only can we walk it, we can bike it, we can kayak it, we can go and visit and embrace the missions because although the park service does wonderful programs there's something missing the most important component of all of these missions the very faith right that brought people here that that is imbued in these buildings and that's what we seek through this mission center so i want to thank you so much today for being here, for supporting and providing for this mission center, for this On the Way On Delay campaign. I want to thank WellMed in particular for recognizing this incredible strategic opportunity to be something more to our community, to welcome pilgrims from all over the world with programs and development so everyone can appreciate this more. So thank you again very much. I'm excited to talk with all of you about more in depth about all of these missions and the programs we look forward to offering. Thank you again. Well, what a blessed day for everyone in the city of San Antonio. And 
to all the people of God that will, are going to come and visit this place uh, as they come to visit the missions, but as we will provide some services and how they can have a spiritual journey you know, to develop their spirituality, their relationship with the Lord, and, and to see the world with different eyes. What I would like to add here is uh, my own personal gratitude to Julie Seguin, who is the director of our capital campaign, to your team, who has been working every day in the many projects. How many projects would be between all the parishes? 175 different projects. This is one of them. Now this is a major pro project for the whole archdiocese. The other ones are in each parish with the capital campaign, there, there is one, two or three projects in every community. So it was a renewal of the whole archdiocese. I would like to thank uh, once again, as, as uh, Rebecca Simmons did, uh, well met, but particularly the two of you, because well met, for us, even though I, I go for healthcare with well men, <laughs> makes a big difference to know you. And uh, Mary Jo and Ryan have been personal friends. Uh, the Grunhofer family has been very supportive in getting us all the contacts and the relationships so that this uh, particular effort will be fulfilled, which means the uh, pilgrimage center. But thank you, because it, it, it's, it's different. It's different. We have many groups that they have helped in many different ways of archdiocese. But to know that you are involved, that you live your faith, that even you have ministries, you know, you work in, 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 in some ways within the community of faith, that this becomes even more meaningful. And will do a lot of good, because it's faith all around it. So thank you. Uh, but I would like to say something about the, the name of this pilgrimage, uh, pilgrim, pilgrim center, or pilgrimage center. The name will be Antonio, Padre Antonio Margil. Padre Antonio Margil was one of the Franciscans that was mentioned earlier. The community who came to this part of the United States before it was the United States. And they came bringing the faith, the Catholic faith here. This particular priest, uh, Padre Antonio Margil de Jesus, he was stationed in the middle of Mexico, close to Mexico City, in Querétaro and Zacatecas, with the community of Franciscans. Well, in his lifetime of service there, he walked from uh, that place, the middle of Mexico, all the way to Panama. And then from Panama, he walked all the way to Nacogdoches, close to Houston, and then got settled here. And he was part of the group who started two, to build two of the missions. But the question, for, for us should be, or for me has been, you know, what, what happened inside of that man to do that? It was his love for Christ. He believed in the body of Christ, the church. And he knew that the church was not just the church that he knew in Spain, because he was born in Spain, or the church that he saw in Mexico. He wanted to share the experience of the body of Christ beyond. And he did all that walking and finally stayed here and was instrumental for building two of our missions. So that, that will be the name is El Camino de San Antonio Missions. What is that about? Pilgrimage Center. The name Padre Antonio Margil. So it will be an inspiration. He's already venerable. So we pray that with this effort, 
a, 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 a coastal canonization who has been installed because has not been moved and is not that known, that man. May this place help and hopefully in a, long, in a short time, hopefully, we will have good news about maybe to be beatified and eventually canonized. Also, I will give you a little bit of a vision of the whole piece here. The, the, the chapel has been very damaged because of vandalism over the years and will be totally transformed. And we have here our architect, Kim Heck, that is with us here. He is the one for And he has already presented preliminary drawings, but we have been given some uh, more uh, ideas, and he will present the final uh, drawing soon. So, and we will begin the reconstruction of the place. But then, on this other side, this building that you see right here will be demolished, it used to be a convent. That will be the parking lot. We need parking for this part. The mission has a parking space, and it's not large enough, but then, if we add parking, it's to benefit everybody. And then behind us is another building that will be restored to, and that will be for Catholic charities. And from the very beginning, when we thought about this, about a pilgrimage center, immediately the question was, okay, that's prayerful, that's spiritual, that's fun, that's... Uh, very, uh, kind of internal renewal has to be expressed in our social outreach. The Catholic Church, we are not just about developing our inner selves, but it is to build up the kingdom of God. And so, right across will be services, many kinds of services. And then in between will be like a plaza, a prayerful med for meditation, for peace. You know, behind us, that is a property of the Archdiocese, is our property, it has been leased, and they are, they are building about 240 or some uh, affordable housing. That will be behind it, and they are already doing that. So, in some way, this will be, it's an emerging community not only a passing by community, by tourists and people of goodwill who come to pray and visit here, celebrate weddings on weekends, but it's the community of the mission. We will have the pilgrims, we will have Catholic charities, and across the street, oh, and we have all those families who are going to be living behind us, and across the street is PJs, and Elizabeth Seaton, that they are part of Catholic Charities, and we work with children in one, in one of those, and the other one is mothers, uh, young mothers with babies. So, what a wonderful setup, you know, that even I don't think uh, Padre Antonio Margil thought about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, we are blessed to be able to have this set up here. So, thank you, all of you, for being here today. Thank you, once again, for WellMet uh, Foundation to help us with this project regarding the, the Pilgrimage Center. And uh, I was surprisingly um, told that it, even before the building starts, we already heard that uh, Rebecca has been doing some, some pilgrimages here. I have, I did the last pilgrimage that was the 49 since I came here. It was precisely with the uh, Grandhoffers, with uh, uh, David and Julie Seguin, and also with the mayors. We had the 49th uh, pilgrimage. We are going to start right away in a small ways already as a system. We are not going to wait until all the projects are finished. We have already the space, we have already the story, so, and we have the director. We are very blessed 
to have you. Very blessed, Rebecca. Uh, you don't know how much joy. You know, I brought uh, this idea seven years ago and um, um, seeing the work that Father David has been doing in charge of the missions. He, I didn't know anything about the missions before I came here. And Father David introduced me to the missions and just coming back constantly. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's good. As you, as you pointed out, is to give one piece that is so needed today. And for us to be instruments of that little piece, profound piece, uh, we should uh, feel ourselves like Father Marheel, bringing something forward that is good, uh, that will transform lives, and that will build up a better society, more humane, more divine. So thank you all for being here today. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Grunhaper and I'm the president of WellMed and also the president of the WellMed Charitable Foundation. I drew the short straw today, having to follow Archbishop Gustavo, <laughs> even compound by the fact that Bishop Mike follows me, so I'll just take a couple minutes of your time because I'm sure you'd rather hear from those two folks. But thank you, Archbishop, for everything that you've done for my wife and I, and thank you on behalf of the community for the indelible mark that you've made on the city of San Antonio. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you for your friendship. Um, first, a little bit about uh, the company, WellBed. Uh, it was founded a mere 30 years ago, so not nearly as long as the missions, but it's been in the community for quite a while. Uh, we uh, focus on taking care of older adults, not that you're old, but <laughs> older adults. I'm a patient too. <laughs> um, and that's, our, that's what we specialize in. We have 24 clinics throughout San Antonio, um, and we're very focused on taking care of the entire uh, patient. Um, so much of medicine today is focused on just the, uh, the uh, getting people well uh, uh, from a physical perspective, but it really is much more than that. It is the whole person is taking care of all of their needs, their mind, their body, and their spirit. Um, and clearly, uh, faith, community in general, but the Catholic faith in San Antonio is a huge part of that for so many older uh, adults throughout San Antonio. Uh, the Charitable Foundation was founded about 13 years ago, um, and it was our way to give back to the community. Uh, this community has made us uh, uh, successful, and it was very important for us to make sure that we gave back to the community um, and to our patients. A lot of what we give back to our patients is uh, projects like this, where they can both uh, reap the benefit of having been part of our organization and to get services and, and help in the community. Uh, we've been partners with the Archdiocese and Catholic Charities for a number of years to help further that goal of being able to help uh, all of the great work that uh, Catholic Charities does throughout San Antonio and helping with those that are less fortunate than ourselves. Um, over the 13 years, uh, we've been uh, blessed to be able to give over $31 million to the community of uh, San Antonio. So, uh, <laughs> um, so that's that's a little bit about the company. But I thought I'd just spend a moment um, to tell you a little bit about my faith journey um, and my wife's faith journey. Um, the um, there was no question that both of our fathers were the spiritual heads of our households. Um, and they took that um, duty and responsibility very much to heart. And there's no question that that has been a huge part of what has uh, led me on uh, my faith journey and the same for my wife. Um, and just like you can't tell the story of San Antonio without talking about the story of the Catholic faith, I'm proud to say that for both of us, I don't think you can tell the story of our lives without including the Catholic faith as the core of what it was that made us who we are today. 
Um, so I'll give a little plug. So anybody that's out there that has been helped uh, in their journey, that has had an indelible mark made on their lives and their journey, just like our fathers, I'd ask you to prayerfully consider honoring them by making a charitable donation to the On the Way, On the Way campaign. Um, without us taking that responsibility and paying it forward, like those that came before us, like our fathers did for us, then um, you won't have the rich, robust experience that we've been able to enjoy and experience. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here and say a few words, um, and I'll turn it over to Bishop Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, my task is to kind of wrap this up and bring it to a close so that uh, we can continue our conversations in, in the private and the like. There's lots of uh, emotion for me here. Uh, Father David and I started coming to this space when we were teenagers. In fact, I wasn't even a teenager yet when we used Concepcion as the chapel for our weekends when we came to discover whether or not we wanted to be priests there. The chapel there was not yet built. When my first year in the seminary in 1964, we attended the first mass that was celebrated there and the dedication of that, of that chapel. But it's the whole sacred ground of it. I remember being part of carrying the rocks and building the grotto, which is on the other side of this building. We had a little group of of uh, seminarians who are dedicated to Our Lady, and we built uh, from scratch that grotto. So it's been sacred ground for centuries, of course, but even that is renewed in each, in each generation. Somebody adds something. Something goes away and something else comes forward. That's the nature of life. It's the, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, time to tear down and a time to build and we're at that time this time of both building and tearing down and rebuilding is part of nature and the part of life and it's actually all the part of faith because it's about that wonderful gift called resurrection as disciples of that one who is raised from the dead Jesus the Christ one of the most important things in our lives is to decide to steward what God has given to us to take care of it to take care of the time, consider the time it took to build the things around us, including these missions. Consider the talent that had to be gathered to make it happen. Consider the financial resources, the treasures that had to be gathered to make these things happen. It's a, it's a very important thing. And one of the words that seems to be absent from our public discourse and too often even from our Christian discourse is discipleship is the word sacrifice. I might vote for the first politician who I hear uses the word. <laughs> there is, it's very difficult to sense, to think of the word sacrifice in our lives. But without it, I've learned something in my life, something very clear, and it's, it's the very core of the, of the most important rite of our church. It's called the Eucharist, Communion, Mass. It teaches us something profound, sacrifice, leads to nourishment. And there is no nourishment without sacrifice. And so we praise and thanks God for all of those who have contributed to this capital campaign and to the many campaigns in their parishes and, and to the efforts. We, we praise God for the sacrifices of those who have gone before us, who have built these, these strong edifices, but more importantly, the strong community of faith from which they house. The, in Latin, the name for a church is Domus Ecclesia, I mean the, 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 uh, the house of God. These buildings are only constructed so that the people of God can gather. And there they witness the sacrifice of Christ and then seek to imitate it in their own life. So as did our dear friends from WellMed, I encourage all in the Archdiocese and beyond the Archdiocese who see the necessity of faith, to see that faith is a, a principle and a completely important foundational element of any society. 
of any gathering of people. All who would seek to see that the Spirit of God, the reality of God is present to us and is a foundational stone in our lives, that we would seek your assistance by offering us your time, offering us your talent, and offering us your treasure as we complete this campaign and as we move on into other areas that need our support and our care. So let's, let's listen to the speakers who have already spoken. Let's finish this campaign with great joy and thanksgiving and let us move on into the future that God is creating for us. Thank you all very much for being here and welcome to our community. Okay, then there are some refreshments over here, I believe.